Welcome again to uh, all the listeners uh, and uh, welcome to another episode of Smiles in the Air, your oral health and prevention podcast. I'm Salsa da Costa and today with us we have a particular special person to me. So we have Victoria Samson. Uh, Dr. Victoria Samson is a dentist and she was recently shortlisted as one of the most promising young persons in Europe uh, by Forbes magazine on the under 30 in science and healthcare uh, 2021 awards. She pays particular attention to the microbiome and uh, also see the, the connection between the mouth and the rest of the body. So it sees the mouth as a, a mirror of uh, the general health. Uh, she used biomarkers and inflammatory markers in her work to diagnose and monitor patients. And you, she has a really nice collaboration with other specialists to treat the patient as a whole. Uh, the project that she's involved with, there are too many to be listed <laughs> here. Uh, but she has a, a particular interest in biomarkers and the oral microbiome to allow a more holistic treatment and less invasive. So she is part of the future of dentistry, in my opinion. <laughs> And I will present you, Victoria, as I call you the queen of microbiome. <laughs> we were talking about this before. So welcome. Thank you very much for the very nice uh, introduction and for coronating me as the queen of the microbiome. <laughs> yeah, but th there's a, a wait now because the question is, can you explain to the listeners what is microbiome? Ooh, okay, so um, I'll try and condense this into like a couple of sentences. Um, so microbiome is basically like an ecosystem of bacteria um, and you've got your kind of good and your bad bacteria and they're usually working in um, connection with each other um, and this ecosystem is what we call a microbiome. So you've got multiple microbiomes in your body. So um, the kind of most diverse and the biggest one is your gut microbiome. And then the second is your oral microbiome, but you also have your skin's a microbiome. Um, vaginal uh, microbiome as well. There, there's lots of them basically. And what we're now starting to see is that with all of these microbiomes, um, it's all about the balance of uh, good and bad bacteria. And if you have that imbalance of bad bacteria, then you start to see, you know, problems um, or diseases, or if it's your skin, for example, a rash, etc. Now, how you got to be the queen of microbiome, as you told offline, like uh, you don't know how I got as the girl of microbiome. <laughs> But how was it? Tell me a little bit about the the path. I I mean, I don't really know. When I was at university, like, I mean, I was like the one sitting at the back, like not really listening much. You know, I was not very interested, particularly. Nice yeah, I was a really, yeah, not a great student, <laughs> to be honest with you. And I don't think I um I was not interested in, in perio, so in gum disease or in oral bacteria at all. Like really, I didn't. I just memorized the bacteria to pass my exams and that was it. But then as when I graduated, um, I started to do a lot more um, perio and I started to actually use um, guided biofilm therapy and I really enjoyed it. Um, and then COVID happened. And when COVID happened, um, I'm quite a high kind of intensity person so telling me to not go to work was just like nuts I was like what do I do so I decided to learn a lot about um, the con the potential connection between COVID-19 and oral health and what really connected those two were was the microbiome and the bacteria and the idea that actually you could be swallowing bacteria from your mouth and it could be traveling elsewhere to the body um, and that's really where my journey started was uh, literally a few years ago and since then I've just become obsessed and I think that you were saying, you know, earlier that I, I look a lot at the connection between general health and oral health. And the thing that connects it is the bacteria, your inflammatory markers. Um, and I think it's a whole new side of dentistry. That, I think that's the word. You are obsessed with it. <laughs> like uh, the saliva girl. <laughs> I am. Yes, I, I do have some great nicknames around the industry these days. <laughs> but how is it? How is it to implement it with your patients? Like, uh, I need your saliva. I want to track this. So <laughs> how you suggest this to the patient? And then how is the, the path also in your the workflow, so to say, um, between the treatment or the initial treatment and then the, the long term treatment? So for most patients, um, we will do screening tests. So I will do a microbiome test to check for um, certain bacteria in their mouth. Um, and then based on their clinical symptoms, so you know if they have periodontal disease, they have pocketing, bleeding on probing, et cetera, I might be more um, inclined to do other tests as well. 
So I might be doing um, inflammatory marker tests, even blood tests sometimes. Um, and then that's right before we've done any treatment. That's their baseline. Um, based on those results, then I'll create like a um, treatment plan and my recalls as well. Um, and then I'll see them, you know, for example, if they have very bad periodontal disease, really high levels of inflammatory markers and um, a lot of bad bacteria in their mouth, then I'll be seeing them more re uh, regularly, uh, reduce their recalls and then retest them um, regularly as well to measure the changes. And what is the feeling of from the patients? They love it. So it's actually weirdly been quite patient driven. Um, I now have a lot of patients who found me online and they just come because they want their microbiome checked and they want something that they understand. I think one of the problems with dentistry is that for everyone who's in the in the industry, like we're speaking a different language a lot of the time and patients don't understand when you say, oh, you've got bleeding on probing and your pocket depth was six millimeters on your lower left seven, but we've reduced it to lower to five. The patients don't get that, right? But if you show them results and you say, look, these are the bacteria that you have. Can you see these red bacteria, like which are say hi, uh, and we need to get rid of them. Patients all understand that and they understand, okay, I've got bad bacteria in my mouth. It's an infection essentially, and I need to get rid of it. Um, and same with inflammatory markers. And what we've realized is that patients prefer quantitative data um, as opposed to qualitative words, because that doesn't mean anything. Yeah. And from that, you have numerous articles that show the, like like we said in the beginning, the mouth is a mirror of general health. So can you list some of them? Um, so the biggest one, I guess, is your, your connection with diabetes. So there's that bi-directional relationship. So you're three times more likely to... Um, have diabetes if you have periodontal disease and vice versa and, and controlling your glucose or your HbA1c will have um, benefits to your periodontal disease as well. Um, but then you've got other things. So there's a lot of work into Alzheimer's and seeing whether or not um, periodontal disease and high levels of bad bacteria can increase your risk of Alzheimer's. Um, what else? And the, the study says 70% increased risk. Um, you've got heart disease. There's a 20% increased risk. Um, infertility as well, uh, you know, erectile dysfunction three times more likely, and the list goes on. And there are so many which are coming out. Chronic kidney disease is a big one that I'm really interested in right now. And that's showing that actually the inflammation from your periodontal disease and all of that bacteria in your mouth is an overload for your, your kidneys. And your kidneys just cannot, you know, control and function anymore. And it will actually exacerbate your chronic kidney disease as well. That, that I was building up the thing, you know, because by having all this relation <laughs> now, you create a super network, super network of um, clinical professionals, like medical healthcare professionals. Yeah. And uh, you have a straight collaboration with them, yep. right? So how does it work? So they reference patients to you, you're going to be some reference for, for them to how it works. So it started when I was just doing oral microbiome testing and the company that I was using um, the, the, the testing from, they do other microbiomes and they have this huge network of doctors, nutritionists, functional um, practitioners. And um, what we realized was that, you know, we could collaborate with each other. And I also was realizing that a lot of the dental industry was quite resistant to what I was doing and they weren't very... Yeah, they're like, oh, well, what we do works. Or, you know, they're, for example, the connection between oral health and general health, some of them would be like, oh, no, but like, there's not enough evidence yet. Or, you know, and then I actually went to the medical profession and I went to doctors, nutritionists, functional therapists, and I said, look, these are the links, this is the research. And if you're trying to get full body health for your patients, then you need to remember that the mouth is a very important piece of the puzzle. And so after that, um, a lot of doctors and, you know, et cetera, they would start to refer their patients to me and they say, okay, you sort out the oral health, you reduce the oral inflammation and the bacterial load, and I'll do everything else in the body. And we were getting incredible results because, you know, there are these patients who, for example, rheumatoid arthritis, where they've been battling this arthritis for years and they've been changing their diet and medications when they actually had inflammation in their mouth for years that was contributing to their general problems. And once they had that treated, then their rheumatoid arthritis improved as well. So it kind of snowballed and more and more clinicians would find out and then they would start referring their patients. So I now pretty much only see patients who are referred to me by other doctors or clinicians. And you build your network like that. 
okay, it helps. You are the only one that are providing this kind of service in London. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it, it's not easy. It's not easy to build this uh, confidence between uh, healthcare professionals, but also to have a, a good relation because that's what's lacking in dentistry today. We have a lot of countries that they are only dentists and not medicine dentists. Yep. Um, and we are forgetting a little bit that we are healthcare providers too, not just... Uh, Drill, fill, and bill. <laughs> exactly, 100%. And, and I think we're now going into a world where there's a lot more chronic diseases. Um, there's a lot more inflammation and we need to focus more on prevention and working together. And the, I think one of the reasons that medical and dental have always been separated is we we speak different languages. You know, you go to your doctor and the only way they diagnose you with a problem is they usually do blood tests or they do something where they, they convert a symptom into a quantitative diagnosis. So they say, oh, you're tired. It's because your iron levels are less than 15, right? And then they give you the medication. When you go to the dental office and you say, oh, you know, I've got bad breath or, you know, I've got this and that, they they just basically diagnose it based on, on qualitative um, symptoms or things that they see in the mouth. And no other profession can understand what they're saying. So if I go to the doctor and I say, ah, my patient's got the probing and blah, 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 they don't get what that means. Um, so now this is a language that both can speak and then you can collaborate properly. Yeah, and you show the results uh, immediately, not only to the patient, but also for the other professionals. Because yeah. it's like, okay, I know that your patient has this problem, so how can we collaborate together? That's And you have a more personalized care. Like that. Exactly. hundred. It's all about personalized care, and I think that's the the real future. And okay, you you the first time that we met it was in 2019. We spent an afternoon together, and uh, you were like full of questions. <laughs> uh, that was impressive. Like this uh, uh, small little girl, because <laughs> today you are in heels, but you, <laughs> yes. you, but you had. So so many questions and you wanted to learn everything about um, guided biofilm therapy uh, at the time. So how you integrated the biomarkers to the guided biofilm therapy work that you were already providing at the, at the time? So I was just doing guided biofilm therapy alone initially. Um, and then I started to just basically um, learn about the oral bacteria and do microbiome testing before treatment. And a lot of it was honestly kind of common sense, you know, I was like, okay, well, if I want a baseline, I need to do it before the hygiene treatment, right? Um, and then what was interesting was I was working in two clinics and one had guided biofilm therapy and the other didn't. And my results from the clinic with guided biofilm therapy was far better than the one that didn't have it. Um, and so then I was really incorporating a lot of these biomarkers to see what is, you know, to actually measure these changes and to compare them as well. Did you apply to all your family to do biomarker tests? For sure. Yes. I, I, I had I, that feeling when you, when you said that I had that feeling. I think I've got microbiome tests of every single family member of mine. And I'm always like, yeah, just just come in. I'm going to do a quick clean, but spit in this cup first. <laughs> <laughs> but you're running the family. You, you are a sister of an orthodontist. So exactly. Come yeah. on. It's it's normal to have that. I do the same thing. I want to check the teeth of all my family members. For sure. Yeah. <laughs> no, but that's, that's a, the other part of you because you are so genuine, you know, <laughs> so you have this uh, bright personality. You really are making a name in the microbiome world <laughs> and the you. biomarkers. <laughs> and uh, uh, I want to, you to spit in this cup. <laughs> <laughs> but um, you are also superhuman with your patients because you. you explain that that's what I, I was listening to you this morning. And uh, when we were talking about uh, your clinical cases, like uh, this person didn't know what they had. So I wanted to find out with, uh, with her and try to uh, collaborate and find a solution for the future of the, of the patient. And that's where you see, right? It's not like uh, treatment now and yeah. the result now, but it's let's attack the root of the problem and have the results in the future. For sure. I think, uh, I think one of the problems with um, dental and medical care currently is that we often treat problems um, when they've already occurred. And we are very um, reactive as opposed to being proactive. And so what I really want with my patients, if I don't have to do a filling and I don't need to take a tooth out, that's a success. And what annoys me is there's a lot of people who are kind of, you know, they, they brag about how many implants they placed yesterday or, you know, oh, I did like 15 root canals. And I'm like, that's, 
it's not great. That's a failure to me because you haven't kept the teeth the way that they should be. And um, and I get it. I mean, some people say, well, how do you make money? And, you know, they're, they're, you need to be doing implants to be making money. And I don't agree with that because if you are loyal and open with your patient, you say, look, this is your problem. Uh, this is what we're going to do to reduce it. And we're going to measure it and monitor it in these ways. And then you get rid of their problem. And then you say, okay, let's maintain this every three months. Let's do GBT, or whatever is needed. They're a patient for life and they will follow you wherever you go. And I'm seeing that with my patients. Yeah, that's why you are on the top of the list of my favorite persons in the, <laughs> in the industry. Because you think in long term like prevention. And mm -hmm. uh, outside uh, offline, we had this talk and you said, uh, imagine if you can pre prevent Alzheimer because we are controlling the microbiome. Yeah. Do you think that this will be possible? I think that I think oral health um, or oral disease or you know microbiome dysbiosis definitely contributes to a lot of systemic diseases. I don't think that it's necessarily a hundred percent causative like gum disease, Alzheimer's. But what I say to all the people who kind of are probably shaking in their head right now, I'm like, oh no, these these connections she's talking about, they're not true or whatever. At the end of the day, what I'm trying to push is prevention. And um, maybe the worst thing I might do is make the patient have another hygiene treatment. You know, like that is the most uh, destructive thing I'm doing in my treatments. And at the end of the day, even if, you know, the connections between oral and systemic link, if you're not convinced, at least you can be convinced about oral disease and, you know, um, and prevention. So, um, I mean, I think that if you look at the connection with inflammation, um, then prevention is the key for all of it. Yeah, if we still have listeners that don't believe that prevention is the solution, come on, what are you thinking? Send about? me a message. <laughs> yeah, send you a message. I'll, I'll call you. <laughs> Flood your DMs. <laughs> Flood my DMs and I'll send you all the papers. <laughs> okay, Victoria, it really was a pleasure to talk with you. So uh, today we learned a lot more about microbiome. We learned that there is a queen of the microbiome. <laughs> uh, no, and uh, again, it was pushing the message that prevention is the solution. And yep. honestly, I don't think that we are talking about future anymore. We are talking about present. Yep. Uh, and uh, if we don't wake up to this reality, we are already too late. Yep. So again, thank you so much for all this glimpse, all the <laughs> see the mouth as a, a whole and the, the, a part of the general health. Uh, learn more about microbiome. Do the control of uh, the the biofilm. Don't yes. get to the dysbiosis. <laughs> yes, yes. And um, do your GBT. That that was the conclusion also. Yeah, and if I can add one more thing, I think that um, a lot of people think that when they're doing a hygiene treatment, they're just cleaning teeth, and you're not. And I think that's what I really want to for people to understand is that. You're reducing their bacterial load. You're reducing their levels of inflammation. You might be having an impact on their general health and also their oral health. And you yeah. are far more than just cleaning someone's teeth. And I think that's really important. Okay. Thank you. That's a good, really good message. So <laughs> for all the other ones, don't miss our next episode. And don't forget to subscribe in any platform that you listen to this podcast. Thank you. And uh, see you next time. Bye. <laughs>